Hello everyone and welcome to Back to Fun with Fitzy. Uh, we are looking at Chapter 13, Video 2, Part 2. And what we're doing is dividing that income. However, in this video, we're going to be looking at actual problems. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we have a scenario and there's a whole bunch of information here that could potentially be in a partnership agreement. Uh, it's all in here in one spot together and eventually we'll work up to the whole thing. But there's a lot of information about these two partners, Dolson and McQuaig. Dolson could have an annual salary allowance of 5000 and McQuaig has an annual salary of 7000 Dolson's initial investment was 40000 That means their capital, their beginning capital. And McQuaig's beginning capital was 10000 The partners are allowed interest at 5% on their beginning capital balances and any net income or net loss will be divided equally among partners. So there's a number of different ways we can divide net income. So let's assume in our first example that they're going to divide their net income based on a fixed ratio. So in fact, what happens is their partnership agreement would say Dolson and McQuaig are partners and any net income or net loss will be divided equally. It's almost as if we're saying nothing, but just to keep things simple here, so we have $82,000 that we need to split. What I would like to encourage you to do is always write the, the partner's names across the top and make a table. Dolson and McQuaig, uh, we're going to split their net income. So basically what happens is the net income I always write over here, $82,000. And it's based on a fixed ratio of 50, 50. So Dolson's going to get 41,000. McQuaig will get 41,000 because 50% of 82 is 41. And basically then, that's it. Dolson and McQuaig each get 41 and I always add them together to make sure it equals our net income and in fact it does. So we're in good shape here. So that's it. Example number one based on a fixed ratio. Now this fixed ratio could have been 60-40, could have been 70, 30, could have been anything, but you're just going to divide it up based on that. And it's quite simple. And as you learned in our, our um, first video, how we actually update and allocate this net income is through our closing entries. That third closing entry, we have R, E, I, and D. Well, it's when we close the income summary on December 31st, we know the income summary needs to be debited for $82,000. And we're going to credit each of these gentlemen's capital accounts. So Dolson Capital, he's going to get 41. And McQuaig Capital, he's going to get 41. So that's that third journal and third closing entry that ends up allocating the net income. Okay, so number two, that was based on fixed ratio. And number two, we're going to do a ratio of capital investment. So based on a ratio of capital investment, if we go back to our problem here, the initial capital investment was 40000 for Dolson and ten for McQuaig. So I'm going to make another table. So I'm going to have Dolson and McQuaig and its ratio of capital investment. And Dolson's capital investment was 40000 I always write that down right underneath their names. That just helps me remember who had what. So basically, out of a total of $50,000 in capital here, he had 40. So the ratio for Dolson is going to be 4 fifths, and the ratio for McQuaig's is going to be 1 fifth. And remember, we have $82,000 of net income that we need to allocate. So 4 fifths of $82,000, so if you do this, you'll get 65600 That's what Dolson will get. And McQuaig, if you take one-fifth of $82,000, he's going to get $16,400. And again, that's pretty simple. It was pretty easy to do. So $65,000 plus $16,400 equals $82,000. So again, that's our check. And see, you see here, the closing entry, last case, where it's based on 50-50, they each got 41 in this case, they don't. One's getting 65000 the other one's getting 16000 So quite a spread here. But again, that closing entry would be exactly the same as this, only the 65000 for Dolson would be here instead of the forty-one, and the 16400 would be there. All right, let's look at a third example. 
where we have salaries and interest allowance and fixed ratio. Okay, so we're going to have three different things, salaries, interest allowance, and fixed ratio. So this is everything in one, basically. So right at the very top, I'm going to write my Dolson and McQuaig. And I remember Dolson had $40,000 in his capital, and he had ten dollars in his capital, and we're dividing $82,000. And so we're going to have salaries. By the way, salaries will always come first. Interest will be next, and then a fixed ratio will be the third thing we need to do if there's any money left over, and you'll see how this works. So let's go up to the top and look at the salaries again because I forget. Dolson has an annual salary of five, and McQuaig has an annual salary of seven. So let's go put that in our table. Five thousand and seven thousand. Okay, and then we're going to look at the interest on their capital balances. So let's go back up and remind ourselves what the interest was. The partners are allowed interest at 5% on their beginning capital balances. And then any net income or loss will be divided equally. Okay, so we got the second part down. So first we have salaries, and then the interest is going to be 5%. So 5% of their capital balances. So I need to take 5% of that $40,000 for Dolson. Um, I'm going to draw some lines in this table to help you guys. Sorry, it's not exactly straight on this tablet. It's hard. So here I'm going to take 0 0.05 times $40,000 to get the number that I need here. And if you do that, you're going to get $2,000. And here I'm going to take... 0.5 of $10,000 because that was his initial capital balances and that's going to be $500. So, so far, I'm going to draw another line. We have taken, let me get a different color here. We have taken, if you add them up, Dolson so far has $7,000 and McQuaig is getting 7,500. So if you add those up, we are taking so far 14,500 of this $82,000 and that's going to leave us with 67,500 left to allocate. And if you recall, anything left over and any net income or net loss will be divided equally. So anything left after that is going to be divided equally. So I have 67,500 here that I need to allocate equally. So half of that, so it's going to be 50, 50, let's see if I can get a thinner pen here, is going to be half of 67,500 is going to be, test my brain here, 33,750. So they're each going to get that. So now let's figure out how much in total they got. Well, they got 5 plus 2, which equaled that 7. So 7,000 plus this 33,750 would equal 40,750 for Dolson. And 33,750 plus the 7,500 is 41,250 for McQuaig. Let's just double check by adding them together. Good. That equals 82,000. That is the amount of net income, remember, that we had to allocate at the beginning. So we want to make sure our net income equals what we get once we split it all up. So based on salaries, interest on our capital balances, and a fixed ratio, here we were able to equally allocate what each of these partners should get based on that net income. And you know based on the closing entries, then we're going to do this. So on December 31st, that third closing entry income summary will be debited $82,000 because we're closing the income summary account and we're updating Dolson Capital and you're going to take this amount and McQuaig Capital you're going to take this amount and there we have it so all of this work doing the math is just so we can do that final closing entry pretty neat eh? so I have one more problem that I want you to try on your own um, I'm going to show you it right here. 
Okay, so assume that Amanda and Sabrina have formed a partnership. The partnership reports a net loss in the first year of $20,000. They have both agreed to take salaries. Amanda takes $10,400 and Sabrina takes $8,000. Pretty interesting when we have a net loss, eh? How are they taking salaries? They also agreed to take interest on their initial capital balances of $10,000 each. And Amanda invested $30,000 at the beginning and Sabrina invested $26,000 at the beginning. And they agree to split any remaining income equally. What is the division of net income or loss here? So I want you to make the table, put Amanda and Sabrina, and that net loss is going to be negative $20,000. See if you can go through it and do it on your own. So here's where I would pause the video, try it, and then when we come back, we will take it up. Okay, so let's, let's look at it. So as I said before, make a table. So I always put their names, Amanda, Sabrina, and the net income in this case was a net loss. So I'm going to put $20,000 in brackets. And then remember I said salaries always comes first, then interest, then the ratio. So salaries first. Amanda takes $10,000. Sabrina takes eight. There we go. So far a total of $18,000. Then interest is second. So interest on their capital balances of 10% each. So Amanda had 30. So 10% of 30 is 3,000. And 26,000, 10% of that is 2,600. So, so far, Amanda has taken 13,000 and Sabrina has taken 10,600. We don't even have any money here. This is a negative. So this is a really strange situation, right? So again, the total so far, if you were to draw a line here, Amanda's taking 13 and Sabrina's taking 10. So, so far, we're taking 23,600. Now, because this was already a negative and we have another negative here, we're going to add those together. So, they have a remaining 43,600, which is a negative that we have to split up. So, in this case, we're going to divide that equally. So, our ratio is 50. 50. So let's take that 43,600 and divide that equally. So now it's a negative number, remember. So 50% of this and 50% of that is 21,800. So when you add it all up now, this 13, which was a positive, minus the 21,800 is going to be a negative of 8,800. And in this case, the 10,600 minus the 21,000, it's like they're giving money back in this case because there was a loss, is 11,000. So Sabrina has to give back 11,200 in essence and Amanda has 8,800. 8, so what does this look like in a closing entry? Well, remember when we have closing entries, it's that third closing entry that we need to talk about. Um, in that closing entry, when it's a net income, you want to credit the capital accounts. When it's a net loss, you want to debit the capital accounts. And you should remember this from grade 11 anyways when we were doing closing entries. So basically here, the journal entry then to record the division of net income is as follows. We're going to debit capital. So Amanda's capital is going to be debited for the 8,800. And then Sabrina's capital is going to be debited by that 11,200. And of course, here is our income summary credit of $20,000, which is what the net loss was. So by now, you should be able to calculate division of net income or net loss under many different variables or scenarios. We talked about fixed ratios, interest, we talked about salary, we talked about combination of all of those. So hopefully you can do that. And you should be able to prepare the closing entries to allocate the net income or net loss appropriately to each partner's capital account. Thanks for watching.